Amir Khan wins a 12-round unanimous decision over Chris Algieri. Where do I even start with this fight? <laughs> Khan looked poor. He did not look impressive whatsoever. And contrary to what most people expected, and it seems contrary to what Khan expected, Chris Algieri didn't try and box Khan. He actually came forward and tried to apply the pressure and bully Amir Khan, which is uncharacteristic of Chris Algieri. He don't normally fight like that. He's normally a back foot merchant. But in this fight, he was coming forward. Now, he's with John David Jackson. Okay, that's Sergey Kovalev's trainer, John David Jackson, a former world champion himself. And they'd obviously looked at fights like the McDonough fight, the Lamont Peterson fight, et cetera, et cetera, and seen that Khan is susceptible to pressure. Khan is a guy who likes to operate on his own time. He doesn't like to be pressured. When he's pressured, he can't punch with full power. Khan's not a devastating puncher or anything like that. But when you put a lot of pressure on him, it takes even more of his power away because he's forced to move more than he wants to move and doesn't get the opportunity to set his feet and punch with more authority. So Algeri had him on the back foot. Khan was rocked. Imagine this, Algeria's a guy with what, like six knockouts in 20-something fights? Khan was rocked in the first round. His legs buckled. I think it was from an Algeria right hand. And from there on in, Khan was worried about getting clipped again. And he was on his bicycle. It wasn't as much, he wasn't on his bicycle as much as maybe the Maidana fight. There were moments where Khan did stand his ground with Algeria and swing it out with him. But for the most part, Khan did land some accurate shots here and there. Algeria, a little clumsy at times, and Khan was able to slip clean shots in. But a lot of the time, Khan was hitting gloves. Algeria was just marching forward with his gloves up, throwing straight jabs and looking for the right hand over the top. And Khan was hitting gloves a lot of the time. Pretty ineffective with his punches overall, I would say, Amir Khan. And the fight followed the pattern of so many Khan fights, particularly when Khan was with Freddie Roach. Now, what Virgil Hunter has tried to instill in Amir Khan is to keep his shape when a fighter is pressuring him. Because when he was with Freddie Roach, he would stand very straight up, his legs would come together and he'd just be running around the ring. If you saw in the Lewis Colazo fight, Colazo was, a, was pressuring Khan, but Khan was keeping his shape much better. And by keeping his shape much better and moving around the ring more methodically, he was still able to generate power and to drop Luis Colazo several times. But in this Algeri fight, he was losing his shape a lot more again, going back to how he was against, uh, uh, sorry, how he was when he was with Freddie Roach. But I think that was because Algeri was pressuring more effectively than someone like Luis Colazo. Colazo was pressuring with his hands down. <laughs> so Khan was able to land clean shots He was able to see the target a lot more easily And land against Luis Colazo Whereas against Algeri It was a lot more difficult Because Algeri had his hands up He's a tall guy Khan also not used to fighting a taller guy Algeri looks so much bigger than Khan in the ring I know Algeri is the one coming up in weight But Khan's coming up in weight too I think Algeri is definitely a naturally bigger guy than Khan I mean, he looked two divisions bigger than him <laughs> it was massive and he was he seemed physically stronger up close than Amir Khan as well he was bullying him very few people expected that but I think that was a very very good strategy and a good game plan by John David Jackson to swarm Khan and put it on him like that if he'd made it a pure boxing match I think it would have been a much easier fight for Khan if you see the Devon Alexander fight that was pretty much a pure boxing match Alexander had no idea how to apply pressure so he was just in the middle of the ring trying to do everything from there and that's Khan's territory so yeah it was a, a good strategy but still not enough I mean Algeria's a limited fighter he's nothing special but he was able to hang in there and give Amir Khan a competitive fight and the fact that he rocked Khan in there wow Khan's punch resistance since the, especially since the Danny Garcia loss his punch resistance has never been great but since the, the Danny Garcia loss I feel like it's got worse and worse and worse and at this point, a guy like Chris Algeri is rocking him. Terrible. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone, and not only his punch resistance, but his physical strength as well in this fight looks suspect. In the Colazo fight, in the Alexander fight, his physical strength looked okay. And 
that might be down to the training camp that Amir Khan had. Because I've seen pictures of Khan in the lead up to this fight. And even just a few weeks out, he was looking fleshy and not in the greatest condition. So I don't know whether he trained that hard for this fight. I mentioned in my pre-fight video, whenever Khan is expected to win easy, that's when he tends to struggle or lose. And this was a fight which was seen as a cherry pick for Khan and he struggled in there. So I don't know whether Khan got complacent yet again and didn't train like he should have should have been training. And remember when he fought Luis Colazo, he was apparently training for like five, six months straight with Virgil Hunter. <laughs> so he had a hell of a lot of preparation. Not sure he had the same preparation this time around. I don't know, but that's his physical strength I'm talking about. In terms of his chin, I don't really think there's anything he can do about it <laughs> at this point in time. He knows he's vulnerable now. Before in his career, he tried to deny it, but deep down he knows that chin is made of some pretty fragile stuff. And the first time he gets in there with a guy who can really crack, a Kel Brook or anyone like that, even Mayweather, I think would hurt Khan, would have the potential to knock him out. Even though Mayweather don't knock people out, the fact that Khan's chin is so bad I think Mayweather would had a, have a good chance if he could land that right hand on Khan's chin of putting Khan away. <laughs> and Kel Brook, definitely, if he landed on Khan, Khan would be in all sorts of trouble. Again, Styles make fights. Kel Brook himself is not really a pressure fighter, so he's not going to fight the same kind of... I mean, Algeria's not a pressure fighter, but I just can't imagine Kel Brook putting his hands up and marching forward against the Mir Khan. I just don't seem like Kel Brook's style. I think Kel Brook will give Khan a little bit more space than that. So, I don't know, but... The guy's chin is so bad that if anyone really can, it seems like anyone can hurt the guy. And if you put him under pressure, his physical strength isn't there to be able to keep you off. And he can't set himself quickly enough to land with any type of power to get your respect. So the old weaknesses are still there. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. There was some improvements in there. You could see Virgil Hunter's influence a little bit, but not enough, I don't think for Khan to be successful at the top, top level. And that's why he's trying to leapfrog his way to a Mayweather shot or a Pacquiao shot because deep down Khan knows how vulnerable he is. He knows if he goes in there against Kell Brook, there's a very, very good chance that he gets iced. <laughs> and he, you know what? If Khan did actually get a fight against Pacquiao or Mayweather, like imagine, this is just a total, you know, a hypothetical scenario, but just imagine hypothetically in an alternate universe, if Khan fought Mayweather and won, somehow won the fight, Khan would probably retire after that. <laughs> I know he's got a big ego and all that, but he'd probably retire because he knows how vulnerable he is. So I don't know. Where do you think Khan should go from here? Where do you think Algeria should go from here? Tell me what you thought of Khan's performance. One thing I will say in closing is that Khan did seem to take Algeria's punches a little bit better as the fight wore on. And he was getting clipped repeatedly with that right hand particularly. <laughs> so he did seem to take the punches better but where do you think both fighters go from here do you think Khan is going to get the Mayweather fight did he look sufficiently vulnerable there for Mayweather to say you know what yeah let me take that guy <laughs> he's good maybe I can get the fight at Wembley Stadium or whatever or you know either way get a big fight with this guy and maybe that'll be a good way to finish up his contract with Showtime uh, is that going to happen is the Kell Brook fight going to happen I mean Either one of them are really good cash out fights. You'll probably get more money for the Kell Brook fight. Not, mu not as much credit for winning it, but more money. The Mayweather fight, I mean, win or lose, you know, as long as he puts up a good performance, he's going to get credit for it. So which way, which direction do you think Khan should go? Who do you think he should fight next? There's even been talk of a Danny Garcia fight. And I've been kind of in two minds about whether he'd win a, a Danny Garcia rematch or not. I think he has the potential to, but... I think his chin is worse now than it was before the first Danny Garcia fight, even though I think his skills are a bit better now and he's a bit more savvy now than before the first Danny Garcia fight. So take your pick. <laughs> so drop your comments below, below. Let me know how you feel about the fight. Let me know how you felt about Khan's performance, Algeria's performance, where Algeria goes from here and whatnot. Yeah, it's your boy Hatman. I'm out.